Right, so you've got four and a half hours on your marks. Get set. Bake. Bake. Welcome to Watch Mojo UK, and today we're counting down our picks for the top ten British shows perfect for tea and biscuits. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we'll be looking at the most comforting British TV shows to enjoy with the UK's favourite sweet treat pairing. We'll even be giving biscuit suggestions to complement the show. What's the ultimate tea and biscuit combination in general? Let us know in the comments. Number 10. Afterlife. Good. Well, let's hope you're still my postman when I'm blind. Netflix produced one of the most beloved modern shows in the form of Ricky Gervais's Afterlife. In this show, we see Gervais's character Tony coping with living without his wife, juggling a dead-end job at his local newspaper, attempting to deal with his depression and seeing his father slowly deteriorate. Yep, it can be pretty sad, which is where the biscuits and tea comes into play. He told you to watch me eating, ain't he? Yeah. But the show is also funny quite often. Plus, there's the wonderful actor who plays Brandy the dog to take the sadness edge off too. For this show, we'd recommend Chocolate Hobnobs. That extra cocoa magic will ease the more sombre moments until the next one-liner is uttered. Not everyone is out to get you, Tony. Number 9. Catchphrase. Press your button if you're ready. For almost 40 years, Catchphrase has been entertaining us on our screens. Yet, it's still an unsung programme, for some reason. Even though screaming at the TV when someone doesn't understand the object or saying that Mr Chips is perfectly performing is one incredible rush. Samuel straight in, can't crack an egg. Sadly, that's not the one. On top of the standard show, there's also celebrity catchphrase. This gives us the opportunity to see famous faces we haven't seen for ages and lose respect for them as they struggle. Stephen Mulhern is also a delightful presenter that makes the whole experience more fun. Here we go then. Throw it up. Throw it up. Look at it. It's coming down, it's coming down. Here it is. <laughs> yeah. In the face! Yeah. For this one, we suggest choosing chocolate fingers, as they look sort of like chips as a nod to the show's mascot. They're also amazing to dip into tea. You're welcome. Number 8. Gavin and Stacey. First of all, I'd like to raise a toast. Which is... <laughs> This James Corden and Ruth Jones created show is one of the most popular UK sitcoms in the modern age. The show is about the developing relationship between Matthew Horne's Gavin from Essex and Joanna Page's Stacey from Wales. Plus the will they won't they romance with Corden's Smithy and Jones's Nessa. But the real highlight is Rob Brydon's Bryn. He steals the show whenever he's on screen. But we really want to know what happened between him and Stacey's brother Jason on the mysterious fishing trip. It is time for the truth. We are going to talk about what happened on that fishing trip right here, right now. Post your theories below. The easily digestible comedy from Gavin and Stacey means that digestive biscuits would be the ideal tea dipper. We choose it mostly for that wordplay, if we're being honest. In fact, forget it. I want no part of it. I'll order my own. I'll eat it in the car. I'm out. Number seven, Downton Abbey. Bates, you all right? Perfectly, my lord. The UK seem to love a good period show, especially if it plays on some kind of factual history. There are Victoria, The Crown, and the creme de la creme, Downton Abbey. This show follows the Crawley family at their vast estate, on top of the upper classes, the show also highlights the lives of the various servants. Oh, Papa. Did you ever think we'd get to this day? I'm not sure. Many historical events happen throughout the show, such as the Titanic sinking, World War I, and so on. This gives us a bit of historical trivia that we can later bore people at parties with. When watching Downton Abbey, we recommend the posh combination of Viennese whirls alongside Earl Grey tea. You see, Mr Bates and I had a plan to get married this coming Friday. What? Number six, come dine with me. And these are the ingredients, figs, for Adam and Eve. Mm. On paper, watching normal people through dinner parties doesn't sound like the most thrilling TV viewing experience. But when you realise that those normal people are British, which means anything goes, suddenly it's riveting programming. You know there's only one thing that I can do and it's this! No, 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 no. Oh, whoopsie! <laughs> On top of the accidental comedy with people just being strange or having cooking disasters, there's also the drama on offer. 
because, of course, there's the chance to win the monetary prize at the end. So some contestants play tactically and give others low scores behind their backs, which can lead to incredible moments such as the You Won Jane situation. Jane, take your money and get off my property. For this epic mashup of a party, a competition and a cooking show, we recommend the extravagant Florentine Biscuits. Number 5. Countdown. Hi Rachel. Hi Sean. Um, could I have a consonant please? This afternoon brain training game show has a bit of everything. It can get your noggin working overtime in trying to find words in a collection of vowels and consonants, or trying to use maths to reach a certain number. You can even get some handy trivia when Susie Dent explains the history and meaning behind select words. And dog face as well, which is not an insult, but it's an um, old-fashioned term for, uh, or at least an ar archaic term for a US infantryman. But on top of all of this, you get to experience one of the most iconic pieces of television music as the clock ticks down each round. We tend to find our head moving to the beat unintentionally. With all of this in mind, we suggest choosing nice biscuits, mostly because they have a word written on the coconutty treat. Jamie, let's hear your method first. Uh, take the 50 and yeah. then times it by 10. I think I can do that in my head now. <laughs> down, yeah. Well done. Number four, goggle box. <laughs> If you explain the concept of Gogglebox to someone who has never heard of it, it sounds like incredibly dull TV. What? You watch normal people watching the telly? Yes, yes we do. But they're not passive viewers. Oh no. The best part is their comments and the interaction between the people as they lounge in their living room. Quite often, they produce comedy gold. With the range of people involved with Gogglebox, there's a group of viewers for everyone's tastes. You can't eat that. What? Oh my god, it's me face back. <laughs> oh, you silly. But if watching normal folk isn't your thing, you can tune into Celebrity Gogglebox. For this show, we think custard creams are the ideal choice. Pretty much for that cosy experience. No. This is awkward. Number three, The Great British Bake Off. Oh no, dear. I love it. Not only did this show take the UK by storm, but also the world. The US seemed to love the comfort of The Great British Bake Off. And who can blame them? Most cooking shows are mean, but not here. Instead, you watch encouragement from Prue Leith, Paul Hollywood, and formerly Mary Berry as the bakers battle it out to be the number one. You've showed us so many skills, good piping, and I'm dying to know what's inside. But if you like disasters, then the celeb-filled stand-up to cancer format is for you. Now, we suggest going with Jaffa Cakes for this one. They're able to be both cake and biscuit at the same time, which covers a large portion of what's made on the show. Here we go. Number two, pointless. <laughs> you can change the M to another letter and make a new word. You a letter from Dave's name or any letter in the alphabet. No. Please forget Dave. In most game shows, there's only one correct answer. But for pointless, well, that's still the case, kinda, but there are some not as good right answers. See, the purpose of Pointless is to select the most obscure correct answer that produces the least amount of points for the contestants. And it's scored. <laughs> <laughs> 82 points. <laughs> the aim is to have the lowest number of points at the end, hence the name. On top of the easy, relaxed hosting of Alexander Armstrong, there's the co-host Richard Osman, who provides more facts on topics. Since Pointless is all about obscure things, we nominate the Garibaldi Biscuit as tribute. It's often not people's favourite and tends to be forgotten that it even exists, but they aren't too shabby. Paris, let's see. Uh, let's see what happens when we say Paris. Bad luck, Sarah. Number one, Richard Osman's House of Games. Now, shall we play some House of Games? Please. Let's have a go, shall we? Our first round is... Rhyme time. Since we mentioned Richard Osman earlier, the soon-to-be former co-host of Pointless has been hosting his own game show, House of Games. For this programme, there are four celebrities taking part. Osman presses a button and a random game round begins. The round can have all sorts of rules, such as rhyme time, highbrow, lowbrow, and so on. Tell you what, if you get it exactly right, I'll give you two points. Uh, <laughs> wow, you're so generous. generous. House of Games has that anything goes thrill to it that makes it enticing. The famous faces battle it out to win a distinct Osman themed trophy that they can proudly put on their mantelpiece or hide away in the attic. For this show, we suggest McVitie's Family Circle Selection Box. 
If you choose with your eyes closed, it'll be as random as the show. Oh many... dear, I've made a terrible mistake. Oh, brilliant. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Watch Mojo UK and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.